Hello, I am Dr. Elena Naxi and I am here to talk to you about a hormone balance in women, how has been my experience with it and what are the results of my research about it. This topic is directed to adult women, mainly around the ages of 30 to 40 years old, but it doesn't exclude other uh, group ages that they have started to notice some changes. And when we talk about a hormone, sexual hormone balance in women, we're talking about uh, two groups of hormones uh, that they complement each other and uh, they are mainly produced in the ovaries. One of them is the estrogens. Estrogens uh, are compound by estradiol, estriol, and estrone. As you see, it's a group of hormones and they mainly dominate the first part of the menstrual cycle in reproductive age women. The second group is the, is the progesterone. Progesterone is just a unique hormone, unlike the estrogen uh, hormones. And progesterone dominates the second part of the menstrual cycle. Uh, in menopausal women, uh, both of these hormones, they go down in quantity, okay? And what is happening uh, nowadays is that uh, we get too much exposure to estrogens, some of them exogenous estrogens from contaminants or toxins, or we get too much exposure to endogenous estrogens, the ones that we produce without the unopposed or balancing effect of the progesterone because of decreased concentrations of progesterone. That's when we say we have an estrogen dominant situation and your hormones are imbalanced when that happens. And how do I suspect I have a hormone imbalance problem? Well, if you find yourself feeling moody, irritable, with depressive symptoms, poor attention, poor sleep, low energy, low libido, very abundant periods or irregular menstrual cycles and recurrent yeast infections, breast tenderness or a fluid retention reflected as a swelling in your hands and feet or increase on blood pressure or if you have been having recurrent allergic disorders or if you have, that, have a diagnosis of an autoimmune disease or clothing disorders, even conditions like fibrocystic breast disease or uh, fibroids, endometriosis, migraine headaches, or even breast cancer, well, this would be a topic that would be important for you as you are having symptoms of estrogen dominance. Now, what are the causes of a uh, hormone imbalance due to estrogen dominance? Well, number one, we have the exposure to exogenous uh, estrogens and hormones that they are synthetic hormones and they are uh, found in a uh, hormone replacement therapy for menopausal women or also in the contraceptive uh, pills or hormones that are given for women in reproductive age. These hormones, they are not the same as our natural bioidentical hormones. They work in a different way and they can cause symptoms of estrogen dominance. Remember, uh, exogenous estrogens and progestins, they are not the same ones like the natural estrogens and progesterone, okay? Number two, we have the premenopause uh, as one of the key issues too. Remember, premenopause uh, happens as an early dysfunction of the follicles that we have in our ovaries. That means like egg burnout in our ovaries. And these eggs, when they are dysfunctional, we don't produce progesterone as before, okay? And uh, premenopause usually happens 10 or 15 years before menopause. Another, uh, another condition is a hysterectomy that can induce an early menopause because during hysterectomy, even though they can 
preserve your ovaries, uh, there is problem with circulation and ovaries can get dysfunctional and atrophic. And also postmenopausal women that they have a lot of fatty tissue, they can have a lot of endogenous production of estrogen without unopposed progesterone and that could be another factor for estrogen dominance. The third uh, factor is the lack of proper functioning of other organs and glandular systems. One of them is the liver. Remember, the liver is the laboratory that uh, functions in the metabolism, elimination, and recycling of hormones. If your liver is not functioning right, that could be a reason for estrogen dominance. As well, there are other glandular systems like the thyroid, the pancreas, the adrenal gland, the hypothesis in the brain. All these glands and their hormones work in synchronization with your ovaries to maintain a balance. And if one of them is out of sync, you can lose your balance and go into an estrogen dominant state. And the fourth factor, and not least important, is the exposure to exogenous contaminants and toxins that they act as a hormone environmental endocrine disruptors, okay? These environmental endocrine disruptors or xenoestrogens are the ones that are found in uh, the petrochemical derivatives that we can be exposed like plastics, uh, emulsifiers, uh, solvents and adhesives in cosmetics as well as uh, pesticides like organochlorines, okay, that they are uh, used in uh, vegetables and contaminating the food that we eat as well as the food that is given to animals for human consumption that these hormones remain in these products. And of course, uh, they are everywhere and they can be a big problem and we need to be aware about them and avoid them. How to diagnose hormone imbalance? Well, uh, to diagnose a sexual hormone imbalance in women is more like a constellation of symptoms than just a specific test. Don't get me wrong, we do use hormones as a collateral help but the fact that you have normal labs, that doesn't rule out that you have or you don't have a hormone imbalance, okay? And uh, usually hormonal lab testing in women is variable and it depends uh, on the age of the patient, the timing of the menstrual cycle, cycle and also the time that you draw the blood, the blood drawn, okay? And uh, uh, also the serum, Hormonal lab testing can be not as accurate as a saliva hormonal testing, but usually insurances, they don't cover saliva hormonal testing. And that's the reason I, I am as a physician using more uh, serum testing. But again, a hormonal imbalance is more a clinical diagnosis, okay? and uh, the use of lab testing is more as a collateral help to check a baseline reference and the progression after treatment. And of course, to help us to rule out other problems like uh, checkups in other glandular systems, micronutrients, and organ function to be sure there is nothing else going on and be sure that we're treating proper hormone imbalance. And how do I fix my hormone imbalance? Well, number one, nutrition. Focus on organic meats and organic vegetables and whole foods. And uh, try to use healthy fats, like the ones that are found in olive oil, avocado oil, or coconut oil. And avoid too much saturated fats or trans fats that are found in processed food or also in non-organic meat, dairy, and eggs, okay? Besides that, uh, be sure that you add a good supply of fiber in your diet, at least 20 to 30 grams a day, as fiber helps your digestive, your digestive system and also helps you with avoiding the reabsorption of estrogens that you are excreting through the gut. The second element that can help you with uh, estrogen dominance is uh, supplements. One of them is to have a good supply of uh, multivitamin and minerals, okay? 
but uh, be sure you don't get too much extra iron because it produces too much free radicals but if you really want to have a good hormone balance you need to have enough su enough supply for the substrates that they participate on these processes okay having a good good multivitamin is a good tool the other supplement that help you a lot is adding d d i n also called the indomethane it's a very long name and this is a component that is found in cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower or broccoli i know we don't eat that much vegetables but uh, this supplement worth the help because it has proven that it helps in the metabolization of estrogens and it has anti-estrogenic effects for that reason it's helpful for us to take it in women 150 milligrams or more it would be helpful to take daily another important supplement is vitamin d we need to add extra vitamin d in our diet because we don't get that much of sun exposure and vitamin d has influence in estrogen and testosterone and actually has been proven with positive effects on libido but adding some 2,000 to 5,000 units a day to your diet, it will be helpful. But remember, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin and it can get accumulated if you take too much. And it's not a bad idea to have your vitamin D regularly checked by your doctor to be sure you don't get into toxic levels. And the next supplement is probiotics. Probiotics really help with digestive health. They help with the absorption of the nutrients and also helps with the prevention of reabsorption of uh, estrogens in the gut and I would really suggest to take a probiotic to help extra with your digestive system and your hormone balance. We have nutrition, we have supplements and number three, natural progesterone. Adding an over-the-counter uh, natural progesterone cream would be a good idea to counteract the hyperestrogenic effects. In my case, I started to use a natural progesterone cream because I was having symptoms of poor energy, premenstrual syndrome, low libido, fatigue, and it has really helped me impressively. When I started to do the progesterone replacement, I didn't have my progesterone levels. I just knew that I had very high estrogen levels and I decided to give it a trial and it has worked excellent. I have been using it at least for three months and I'm very glad with the effects. Of course, you need to be aware that uh, after two to six weeks using the progesterone, you may have a little bit of exacerbation of the symptoms because progesterone induces a sensitization of the estrogen receptors. But once the progesterone levels normalize, that sensitization of the uh, estrogen receptors gets to a normal level and the symptoms subside. Now, Progesterone has a very ample range of therapeutic effect and for you to have uh, adverse effects because you are taking too much, usually you present with somnolence or depressive symptoms. For that reason, don't use too much. Usually you can find the uh, over-the-counter progesterone in Amazon. There are different brands and they have some directions, but I will do a specific uh, video on how to use it in the near future. And the fourth uh, element on the treatment on how to fix your hormones is how to manage stress. If you don't manage stress good, all of the above, they are going to be ineffective. You cannot have drained or hyperactive adrenal glands when you try to balance your sexual hormones. And managing stress, it needs to be a key factor. Uh, you need to try to work on your spirituality. Some people use like a, a Bible Readers Club. In my case, I use uh, some meditation and mindfulness. There are available apps that they can help you uh, in this uh, topic, like a, a Calm or a Headspace, that is the one that I use. And also exercise is a key factor for managing stress. Of course, uh, it doesn't need to be so structured. Uh, if you want to try something like uh, games, uh, team plays, or something like that, like walking with your kids or playing with your kids, gardening, that counts as an exercise. Now, if you want to do something more strenuous like CrossFit, 
that's okay as long as you give yourself time to recover okay and another important factor is to be aware about the toxins and contaminants and avoid exposure to them you know uh, in our households we have been exposed to a lot of petrochemicals to be more conscious about cosmetics and detergents there are apps like something dirty that they can help you about the components that they have the uh, products uh, be sure that that your cookware try to avoid teflon and use more metal and ceramic and stay away for, from pesticides uh, this is an important element to try to keep your hormone balance in play well this is my summary about sexual hormone balance in women and how to diagnose and fix hormone imbalance in uh, women when you have uh, estrogen dominant symptoms. And my final points are, number one, listen to your body and realize there is a problem. Number two, check your risk factors for estrogen dominance and work on them. Number three, hormone imbalance is more a clinical diagnosis and labs are a collateral help. Number four, work on nutrition, get more organic foods and add multivitamins, fiber, vitamin D, D and probiotics. Number uh, five, check the possibility to add progesterone supplement. And number six, uh, manage stress and get plenty of sleep. Well, this is Dr. Elenaxi. Blessings to your health and see you soon in my next video. Bye!